Thank you, Jesus. Come on in, family. Come on in. Come on in. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Sunday morning, it's time to celebrate. It's time to celebrate. We're going to celebrate Jesus today. Come on, somebody. Who's excited about celebrating the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Hallelujah. Where's all my conquerors at? I can't hear you this morning. Come on. Where's all my conquerors? Who's overcame? Where's all the overcomers at this morning? Come on, somebody. Who's washed in the blood of Jesus? Give them a shout. Give them a shout of praise. You've been saved. You've been delivered. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the house of God. <clears throat> Excuse me. We'd like to welcome you on Facebook, and we'd also like to welcome you on YouTube World. Thank you so much. You could be anywhere this morning, but you decided to join us, and we thank you. One more thing, we want to let you know that there's still time to make it. Come on out, family. Traff there is no traffic. There's nothing that's going to be in your way. All we got to do is get up and take that step. Come on out to the house of God, and let's celebrate our king in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We got a great potluck coming up after, after service, our Thanksgiving potluck. So come on out and join us in Jesus' name. If you could put that scripture up, please. Sister, 1 John chapter 2, verse 14, please. Hallelujah. I'm so excited I lost my voice. Come on, somebody. I have written to you who are God's. Where's all God's children at? Come on. Come on, somebody. Because you know the Father. Because we know the Father. Amen? I have written to you who are mature. Where's all the mature Christians at? That's you. That's you. Come on, somebody. That's you. You're the mature Christians. You're in the house of God. We don't have it all figured out. I didn't ask who has it all figured out. I just said who's here and who loves the Lord. Come on, somebody. Praise God. We're going to praise him today. In Jesus' name, I have written to you who are mature in the faith because you know Christ. Because you know Christ. Amen? It says, who existed from the beginning? I have written to you who are young in the faith because you are strong. Where's all the young, young men and, and ladies at this morning? Where are you at? I see some strong men back there. Come on, somebody. Strong in the faith, though. We're talking about a spiritual thing. Amen? Because you are strong. God's word lives where? In our hearts. God's word lives in our hearts. And through the heart flows the issues of life. This is why it's so important to get God's word in your heart. Amen, family? Because sooner or later, what's in your heart is coming out in Jesus' name. And you have one. Oh, this is the part. This is where I get excited. Woo! Come on, somebody. And you have won your battle with the evil one. He has no more power. He's been defeated. Come on. That's exciting. We have won. We're winners. Winners. I'll jump alone. I will. We are winners, champions, overcomers, overcomers in the name of Jesus. And you might say, Brother Ryan, I don't really feel like that. I'm not really feeling that overcomer thing this morning. You know, there's some things going on in my life, and I don't really feel like jumping. I'm not really as excited maybe as yourself, Brother Ryan, and that's okay. But the word of God says in Romans that we are overcomers and that we have been set free. So I don't know about you, family. I'm going to go by the word. I did too long on my own and it didn't work out. I tried to figure everything out and it was nothing but problems. So I stand on the word of God. And the word says that you're winners, that we win in Jesus' name. That we are overcomers by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. So give them a shout. Give them praise in this house. Because we're going to celebrate a king today. 
Make the way for the king in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Excited. Man, he's such a good God. Father, I thank you. I bless you and I praise you, Father God. We are your sons and your daughters. And we've come here to your house, Lord. Thank you for inviting us into your presence, almighty Lord. Thank you for allowing us to raise our hands, to, to, to raise our voice, to praise your name, Father. What a privilege and an honor, Father God. To, to jump before you, Father God. When the doctor said, I'll never walk again, you said, I will dance like David danced in Jesus' name. You said, I will be healed in Jesus' name, just like our pastor's being healed as we speak, Father. We thank you for the healing that's taking place, my Lord. My God, you're such a good God. Amazing are you, Lord. We love you. We honor you. And we bless you in this house, Father God. Have your way amongst your sons and daughters today, Father God. As they come to the altar, Father God. And as, as, as they cry out to you in faith this morning. Not in desperation. We will cry out to you in faith this morning, my Lord. <laughs> we are victors. We have the victory in Jesus' name. And we're going to praise you. We're going to celebrate your name. We're going to celebrate you because you're the almighty God. And we're going to run and be covered by your almighty wings, Father God. We thank you, Lord. Father, I ask for traveling mercies for those that haven't arrived, for those that are on Facebook and YouTube world that decided to get up, and now they're on their way out here, Father. I ask that angels encamp around them, Lord, that a hedge of protection be around them as they come to the house of God to be blessed and to be refreshed. Father, we give you all the honor and all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm going to call out to you, saints, and I'm going to say, come now. Come now. We don't have to wait until the music gets started. We don't have to wait till the worship gets started. Come and take your rightful place now at the altar and give God glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. I want to hear those hands. Never been. You've never been defeated. You've never lost a battle. For you, all things are possible. For you are a supernatural, supernatural God, supernatural, 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 supernatural God, supernatural, supernatural, supernatural. To Him who has no beginning, be all the blessing, all the honor. To Him who spoke and it was beyond the glory, all the power. To Him who was and is to come, beyond the blessing, all the honor. By the Spirit and the Son, beyond the glory. Come on, you never been. You never been to be. You are things are possible, but you are a supernatural, supernatural God, supernatural, 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 supernatural God, supernatural, supernatural, supernatural. To Him who came, to Him who came to earth and died, be all the blessings, all the honor. To Him who rose and is alive. To him who broke the chains of sin, God the blessing, God the honor. To him who's coming back again, God the glory. You 
you've never been. You've never been defeated. You've never lost a battle. Supernatural, supernatural, God, supernatural, 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 God, supernatural, supernatural, supernatural. To Him who turned, to Him who turned the water into wine, to all the blessings, all the honor. To Him who gave sight to the blind, to all the glory, all the honor. To Him who can. All the blessings all the yesterday, day. yesterday, today the same, now and forever. You never been. You never been defeated. You never lost the battle. Do you want me the possible? For you are a supernatural, supernatural God, supernatural, supernatural, supernatural. supernatural. Supernatural, supernatural, supernatural. Come on, unchangeable, unchangeable, unstoppable, unshakable, supernatural. God, omnipotent, preeminent, magnificent, supernatural. God, miraculous, victorious, so glorious, supernatural. God, eternal. Immortal, invisible, supernatural, God, unchangeable, unstoppable, unshakable, supernatural, God, omnipotent, preeminent, magnificent, supernatural, God, miraculous, victorious, so glorious, supernatural, God, eternal, immortal, invisible. You've never been defeated. You've never lost a battle. Do you all things are possible? For you are a supernatural. Supernatural God, supernatural, 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 supernatural God, supernatural, supernatural, supernatural. All things are possible. All things are possible, all things are possible, all things are possible. Juan, todo es posible. All things are possible, all things are possible, all things are possible. En el nombre de Jesús. All things are possible, all things are possible, all things are possible. All things are possible, all things are possible, all things are possible. Last time. All things are possible, all things are possible, all things are possible. Hallelujah, all things are possible in the name of Jesus. Yes. Come on, give him glory, give him glory. Give him glory in the name of Jesus. Lord, we say yes to you, Lord, today. That whatever we're going through, Father, whatever we're going through, Father, we're going to get through it, Father. Like the Spirit of God was saying right now, we're going to get through it. When you did it once, Father, you're going to do it again. And you're going to do it again. And you're going to do it again, Father. We thank you.
Continue to worship him right there. Continue to worship him right there where you're at. Let your worship be heard. Let your voice be heard today. All through this week, I see nothing but the people of God being attacked left and right. But I also see the miracles of God, the miracles and wonders amongst the people. I see healing amongst the people. I see restorations among the people and family. I see hearts be restored. So as the enemy attacks, the Lord is there and he does it again and again and again and he has you covered. So whatever it is that you're going through right now, whatever it is that you've been carrying right now, it is here for you to lean right here. For I tell you that your healing is in this place today. That your healing is in this place today. That your healing is in your place today. For he has done it. And he will do it again and again. But it's up to you to leave it right here today, right now. For greater is he that is in you. Porque mayor es el que está en ti. Mayor es el que está en ti. Let's
Father, surrender it all right here. Father, have your way. Levanta tus manos. Levanta tus manos. Ríndete hacia Él en este día. Aquí estoy, Señor. Aquí estoy, Señor. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Sálame, Señor. Sálame, Señor. Te lo entrego todo, Señor. Yes, Jesus. forward please we're gonna make room for you the Holy Spirit wants to do something right now and we're gonna allow him to have his way but now is the time family come to the altar
Declare that over your life right now. I want to be healed today, Father. I open up my heart to you right now. abro mi corazón, Señor, en este día. on Calvary Father it's by your blood we have been set free and we receive it we believe it Father and we will stand Father God and we will stand and when we don't know what else to do we'll stand some more we trust you Lord Father, we release any heaviness, any bitterness, any pride, Father God, anything that would hinder us, Father, from seeing you face to face. Father, we bless you and we honor and we thank you for this atmosphere of healing, Father God. This tangible atmosphere of healing. For the king is truly in this house, people. <laughs> Jesus is truly in this house. of your father you guys just sit in that <laughs> thank you father you know it's it's difficult to come out of that family but you know what the beautiful thing is you can take that home you can do it in your car You can do it in your restroom, in your bedroom, in your living room. It doesn't just have to be here. See, this is the rally. This is the rally party. But the work begins when we leave. You know, so I want to encourage you guys in that. We're going to continue in our worship family, and we're going to give to the Father. Amen. So would our ushers come up as we receive our tithe and offering? Let's give them a hand clap. So before you guys go, just give me a minute. I want to share something with you. You know, on Thursday night, I shared uh, about tithing and giving. And um, for me, for Brother Thomas, it's kind of difficult for me to get up here and share about tithing and giving just because I don't want it to be me. I don't want to push. I don't want to poke. I don't want to prod you to give. It should be from your heart. Amen. But I, what I do want to share is a little something that the, uh, the disciples did in the beginning of the church. And it's, in, it's found in Acts 2. Uh, verses 42 through 47, and I'm just going to run through it briefly, okay? And the Bible says, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And all came upon every soul. He's talking about the disciples. All came upon them, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. 
and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing it to the and distributing the proceeds to all as they had need. And day by day, attending the temple together, that's what we do, and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. You see, so these apostles, these disciples would sell all they had. Well, not all, but they would sell the things that they had, their possessions, in order that others might have. They would come together, a community. And that's what we are here at Turning Point Fellowship. We're a community. And the Bible says as they begin to do that, the, uh, the, the increase of those who were being saved grew day by day. And I don't know about you guys, some of those that have been here since Barnwall or even the Western Church, right, on, on 13th Street, if you look around, day by day, look at this. And this is all through the power of God, amen? This is all through the power of God. So I just want to encourage you, we're a community. We're a community. Give from your heart generously as the Lord has placed it upon you to give, not grudgingly, because the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Amen. Give in Jesus' name. Before your throne of grace, we gaze upon your face. We bow before you now. We cry, Holy. Before.
holy is the Lord. singing the word of God that's found in Isaiah 6 if you guys want to check it out exactly what you were singing Isaiah 6 amen it's beautiful to sing the word of God if you could just please stretch your hands forward in agreement amen Father, we just thank you right now, Father, for this tithe and this offering, Father God. And Father, we ask that you would give wisdom to the leadership, the elders, the board, and pastor on how to allocate these funds, Father, to further your kingdom, Father God. That we can take bus loads to heaven with us, Lord. We thank you that every bill is met, Father. That every need is met. We ask that you would bless your people, Father continue to pour out blessings upon blessings that they're unable to contain as your word says so we just thank you once again and we bless you in jesus name amen and amen amen we're gonna uh release our worship team at this time amen let's give them a hand clap oh hey wait wait a minute wait a minute i'm sorry pastor bruch has asked that you guys wait so go ahead you guys can go ahead and just hang out please Sit in the, in the atmosphere. Amen. What we're going to do now is we're going to release our, our children and our youth right now. You guys can go out. We're going to release our children, our youth. Amen. And as our youth leaves, come on, family, celebrate them. Those are your children. If you don't, I guarantee you there's a man out there that will. There's a, a, a little girl out there that will. Got to know you love them. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to run through a few announcements, you guys, to let you guys know what's going on here at Turning Point Fellowship. Amen. Before we bring up uh, Pastor Baruch. And um, I'm pretty sure uh, we only have a few. So what's coming on uh, this Saturday, which is uh, the 12th, will be the uh, women's meeting. Amen. 
Let's give a hand clap for the women. There you go. Please join us Saturday, November 12th at 10 a.m., women's meeting. The Women of Virtue, amen, and it's a happy Friendsgiving. It's a Thanksgiving potluck-style lunch after the message, amen. You guys will be having lunch after the message, and it says Sister Margarita will be speaking. Sister Magas, come on with it. Amen. Our men's advancement, amen. That's coming up, guys. Right around the corner. I hope you guys are excited. You guys got to call each other. Oh, I'm glad, I'm glad we're here. So, gentlemen, if you guys need a ride or anything like that, you guys need to get linked up with somebody because you have to work that day, come see me, see Brother Fred. We'll, we'll help you guys out. We'll try to link you up with somebody that can get you up there. Amen. We don't know what we don't know. So if you don't have a ride and you don't tell us, we don't know. Amen. So let us know, you guys. Also, when we come back from the mountain, sister, 3 p.m. start time. Amen. And that's November 20th. That's, that's going to be the only 3 p.m. start time, you guys. So don't come next Sunday at 3 p.m., please, because you're going to miss the service. Some of us still might be here uh, uh, fellowshipping. But. So November 20th, 3 p.m. start. Amen. Amen. And um, on another note from the children's ministry administrator, she asked that. To pick up your children, you know when you guys exit the foyer to the left and you go out, we go out to the parking lot, there's a little black gate on the right side. If you guys have children there in the, in the, that are in the children's school, if you can pick them up right there, because we're trying to, what we're trying to do, you guys, to make it nice and orderly, we're going to step out the foyer, walk out into the parking lot, and we're going to go to the potluck like we've been doing it. The only thing different is you're going to pick up your children at that little black gate outside the foyer amen so this way it's just not a bunch of people and running and whatnot and also first time visitors is there any first time visitors here in the house can you raise your hand there you go praise the lord hallelujah good to have you my brother god bless you so i would like to see that brother and his family in the front of the line at potluck i don't want to see my brothers and sisters throwing elbows and whatnot no amen Given it would be given unto you. So I believe that's it. Without further ado, um, I would like to welcome Pastor Juan Baruch. Amen. Come on, family. Let's stand up and give him a hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amen. So, amen. 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 Praise God. Uh, Thank you for the welcome, and welcome everybody in the name of Jesus Christ for being here today. Amen. I just want to ask them to do that song they did to do it again. And I want you to listen to the words, listen to what it's saying, and really pay attention to what it's talking about.
Come on, sing it out. Praise God, amen. You know, uh, I st the Lord put that in my heart to walk. And so you guys see me walking back and forth. And just imagine for 27 years walking back and forth in cells, on yards, on tears, praying and believing God that one day he's going to open doors for me and allow me to come home. And uh, I went through, I, I think it was five different governors that we went through. And our hope was always, you know, this governor's going to do something for us, the life group. And uh, of course, never was happening. And all we had was Jesus. You know, we had to cry out to the Lord. And uh, what the Lord has put on my heart is to share with you a little bit of, of being able to stand you know, through, through everything, and, and I titled this message, uh, I have two different titles, <laughs> Stand No Matter What, amen? Let's pray real quick. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for another day of life that you've given us, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you allowed us to wake up with breath in our lungs this morning, Father. We are op able to open our eyes and, and see the glory of a new day, for Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you considered us for this day to be able to come and worship and just praise you, Lord. We know that there were many that had plans for this day, Lord, and you abruptly changed them. They came before your presence to give an account. And we're grateful that you give us another opportunity, Lord, to be able to repent of any sin or anything that we have committed that was not pleasing before your presence, Lord. Let it be you that will search out our hearts and our minds and remove all obstacles, Lord. Remove everything that will want to hinder us from being able to receive from you today, Lord. And let it be you that would continue to just be glorified. Father, I commit myself into your hands and you would just continue to wash my mind and my heart as well, Lord. 
Search me out, Father, and remove all those things that would want to hinder me from bringing forth the word that you've placed in my heart, Father. Let it be your Holy Spirit that would anoint these lips and this tongue, and let it be your word that would come forth, Lord, that the things we share would minister to the hearts and to the needs of your people. I thank you for each and every brother and sister that are here today, Lord. I just pray that you just continue to bless them, Lord. We lift up our pastor, angel, Lord, just be with him, continue to strengthen him, Father. We're believing, Father. We're believing you. We're not believing the doctor's reports, Father. We're not believing the scientist's reports, but we're believing you because you're our healer, Father. We just thank you for him, Father, for his faithfulness unto you, Lord. Continue to be with him even as we pray, Father. Strengthen him, Father. Comfort him in his time of need, Lord. Father, in whatever struggles he may be having, Lord, we just thank you for the healing in his mind, in his spirit, Father, in his soul and body. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we give you the praise. We give you the glory and all the honor. And the church and I said, amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. So, Paul, let's go in the book of Ephesians. Oh, I didn't give the guys any scriptures. They already know I don't do that very often. I meant to last night. I was said, oh, I got to write the scriptures down. And this morning again, I said, I got to write the scriptures down. And on the way here, uh, I was talking to Pastor. And uh, like, wait, I was supposed to bring scriptures, right? He was, he was that would have been nice, <laughs> of course. But uh, I'm sure they can catch up. Amen. So let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. And... Uh, I think we all pretty much know this, this line of scripture. Amen. I want to give a thanks to uh, everyone that was continually supporting me while I was away and still supports me. Man, I want to give a special shout out to my sister Maria and my brother Bert that were always there. All my brothers and sisters were always there, but they would always come up and visit unexpectedly sometimes. Amen. There were times I didn't want to get visits and there they were. So I praise God for them, amen, and for everyone that, that was able to come out when they came out to Sister Olivia for the time that she was there with me, uh, for little Reina, as I sat here and, and watched Reina as she grew up, amen, and, you know, Fernando doesn't know this, but I was praying for him before he was even known in her life, you know, because when I knew Reina, of course, she was just a little girl, and I was praying for the husband that God was going to bring into her life. And I, I learned that a long, years ago. Amen. I tell my, 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 my daughter-in-laws and my son-in-laws the same thing. You know, before you even came to know my, my daughter or my son, I had already been praying for you. You know, that God was going to bring the right person into their lives. And we should do that for our children, you know, always. Because, you know, you don't want to start praying after they met, met, meet some knucklehead like I was. Amen. <laughs> Then you say, oh, well, we got to get that guy saved. Pray for someone that's already saved, amen? So let's right there. I just thank all of you, amen, as well as all of you that kept me in prayer, uh, uh, supporting me through your prayers, amen, and, and through the, the, you know, Bert, I'm Pastor Angel, of course, I would talk to him more on the phone, but he would tell me from when the church first started and, you know, when he was moving on. I still got the flyers that they used to send me when they were first starting out, and I share that with him and stuff, and, and to where, where it is today, I praise God, because uh, God is doing a work, amen, from the, the first five or six that started off in their living room, and, and here we are, a congregation, and of course, those of you that were here for the opening day of this church, and how the brother came and shared how God had put Angel, Pastor Angel, on his heart for this place, you know, uh, all the developers that wanted to buy it were willing to pay way more money than, than the property was worth for their, of course, for their own gain, right? We're, we are a capitalist country, <laughs> amen? But uh, God had another purpose for it. And it, it was, it was going to be your home. That's what he wanted it to be. He wanted it to be your church, amen? So I praise God for that, amen? It's right there in Ephesians chapter 6, and uh, starting at verse 10. Ephesians 10, I'm reading out of New King James Version. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his uh, might. Yeah, I'm reading out of Put on the whole King armor James of God yeah. that you may be this able to stand my brethren, against the wiles of the Lord and in the devil. power of his might. Yeah, I'm reading out of right? Put on the King whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the Lord and in the power of his against principalities, against powers, the rulers of the darkness. Put on the whole armor of God against spiritual wickedness in high places. 
Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. Amen. And we're going to emphasize on standing. Amen. So to stand, we're not talking about just in our physical being, being able to stand, but it's holding on to something. Amen. Holding on to our faith, standing in faith in what you're believing in. Amen. Share a little bit with you guys about myself. You guys know that I went away. Uh, I had to learn how to stand in my faith. Being in, in prison, uh, through the county jail and prison and all that, when you're a Christian, you're considered a, a no good person. You're considered a dropout. You're considered weak, a punk, all kinds of things. And they let you know that too, <laughs> pretty much. A lot of times they'll come and just voice that to you, you know. But I had to learn to stand because I had known, I had come to know who had forgiven me for what I had done, not only because of what I had done to get there, but throughout my life, the lifestyles I had lived. And I had to learn to stand that I was a child of God and not run as a sureño, not run as a homie, but stand up to whoever would come up to me and ask me where was I from, who was I, whatever, and stand up and say, I'm a Christian. Amen. You know, and... Like I said, you get all the, all the different titles because I had done time in youth authority, so I was that way too. I, I knew the, the ropes, amen. To me, Christians were punks and they were weak and most of them were child molesters. That's the way I looked at it, amen. So I knew that people were going to look at me that way, amen. But I had to learn how to stand in boldness. No matter what came my way, I had to stand in my faith and my, my belief in Jesus Christ. I think you've heard, you guys have heard Pastor Angel say many times, you weren't there. You weren't there when he was in his mess of what God brought him out of, amen? And when you're able to stand, you're able to under, uh, get people to understand that they weren't there. They don't know what you've been through. They don't know your life. They don't know the struggles that you've had in your life, amen? But you're able to stand in faith and say, you know what, I'm a child of God. I do belong to the king, amen? Let's go to the book of, of Daniel, chapter 3. And you guys know the stories. I'm, I'm not preaching nothing new to you. Just putting it in this perspective where, where we have to, as Christians, amen, as believers, learn to stand no matter what, what comes our way, amen. And this is the story of, of Daniel and, and his three friends that uh, were in Babylon at the time. And, and, and King Nebuchadnezzar, just to give you a quick uh, reference before we jump into the main scriptures that I want to share. Amen. He, he had set up a, a statue of himself. And he was, saw himself as God, wanted the people to worship him. Amen. But here were these Hebrew kids who had been taken there in captive as slaves. But they were serving God no matter what. They were still practicing their faith. They were practicing their religion. And they were going to serve God no matter what the king or anybody said they were going to serve the Lord. So let's go right there to chapter uh, 3. Um, we're going to start off where, where, let's go to, man, it's really hard to start anywhere. Let's start at verse 1. Let's just go there. Chapter 3, 1, it says, says Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth of six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then the Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. Then the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the judges, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried aloud, to, cry, uh, cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image that the goodness of the king has set up. And whoso fell, falls not down and worships 
shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fury furnace. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that the Mukinezer the king, had set up. My, my version says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego on trial for disobedience. Wherefore, at the time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spoke and said to the king of Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, king, have made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falls not down and worships that, that worships that he should be cast into the midst of a burning fury furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded you. They serve not your gods, nor worship the golden image which you have set up. So imagine these people are watching now for who's doing it and who's not. And we say layman turns, they went and snitched on them, right? <laughs> Gave them up. So they were jealous of them, really. That's what all it, what, what it's about. So verse 13 says, Then the Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Ab Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. The Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do you serve my gods? Do, you, do, do not you serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you be ready that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fury furnace. And who is that God who shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fury furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, nor worship the golden image which you have set up. Amen? Why I'm sharing this is because these young men, no matter what came, they got threatened right now for not doing what the, the king was asking. It didn't matter to them. They were going to hold their ground. They knew who they had believed in. And as we read that scripture right there, they said it doesn't matter if God delivers us or not. We're, going to, we're not going to do it. We're going to stand on what we believe. We're going to stand in, we're, in, in the God that we believe. That's who we're going to worship. Amen. And as I share with you, when we stand, what it means to stand, you might ask, well, what does it mean? How do I do that, brother? Right now, my life might be all tore up. I'm going through different changes. Disbelief comes in. Doubt comes in. Uncertainties come in into our life. Ask Christians, because I believe we're all Christians, amen? amen. And that does come, amen? My family and I, of course, as well as you, because you're part of the family, we're praying and believing for Pastor Angel, amen? And uh, we prayed with him the, the, the day before he went in for his first surgery, and uh, we went and prayed, and, and they asked me to, to, to lead the prayer. We all prayed one, and then I, I ended up closing. And what I shared with my brother and sister was, we're going to come in in victory, and we're going to go out in victory. Amen? Yeah. We're not praying for God's healing. We're thanking God for his healing. Amen? We're thanking God for the healing already. Amen? Because we're going to believe in him who is not seen. Even though you don't see him, we believe in him. Amen? That he can do the impossible. Amen. And like I said, talking to Pastor Angel, the different reports we get from uh, Sister Maura on how he's doing and so forth. And when I talk to him, it's, it's, it's Angel. You know, he, to me, like nothing really happened. <laughs> he's always missed words. <laughs> he's always misspelled words. You know, we all do that, I believe. Amen. And so I was like, okay, like nothing happened. You know what I mean? You're okay. And he was saying that. He goes, I feel good. I, I'm like, you know, he goes, of course. I go, yeah, so what's new? You know, when he told me that, he goes, yeah, every now and then I, I mispronounce a word or I forget a word. I go, yeah, so we all do that. You know, it's a big deal. They, in, in Spanish, they say, es la bola. It's the ball. The ball of years, amen. <laughs> but anyways, so the point is this, that we got to stand, amen, and not give up. We got to stand and believe God. 
for what he has done, amen, and what he is going to continue to do, amen. As I shared with you, being away for all that time, uh, as I was walking around right here, when I first came out, they were already closing in that song, but of course I know that song because I said I, I, I made it my personal anthem because I remember many times wondering, Lord, when, is, when are these gates going to open? The Lord had spoken to me and given me a word back in 1991, no, 93, and told me not to worry about my coming in or my going out, that just like he had given me 38 years to life, he was going to be more glorified in my life when he got me out. And it took 20 years later. <laughs> it was 20 years later, but God is faithful to his word. Amen. God is faithful to his promises, man. And, I, and I, I would hang on to that word, amen. And I always had brothers, different brothers, that would come up and bring me letters and notes of their dreams that they had. And I know you're getting out. I saw you. You were walking with me on the street, and we were going out, and we were doing this. And, of course, that was giving me hope, amen. It was keeping my faith alive, amen. And there were, there were dark times. There were times when, you know, you want to turn back and say, man, is this really worth it, Lord? You know, here I'm praying, here I'm going through all this humiliation through the people in the yard, through the people that, that surround me, even cellmates, you know, that would tell me certain things, you know, and they would move out because they said, we can't live together. Why not? You know, I thought we were cool. No, you, you know, you're, a different, you're from a different breed, brother. <laughs> you're a Christian. You know, you're a Christian. I can't hang with you. You know, they wanted to do their thing, and of course, you got to set up rules. You know, if you're going to do drugs or do whatever you're going to do, that's yours. If they come and ask, who's it? All I'm going to say is, it's not mine. I'll take a blood test. I don't use. I go, so it's your cookie, right? You're going to write that. Oh, bro, I go, I'm just telling you, be straight up. Be a man. You know, you want to play like that? Then you got to play your own game. You know, you got to man up, right? So this was something that I had to learn to do to stand as a Christian. Amen? I had different people come at me in my face. Like I said, when I first got into the system, the first time I was out on the yard of preaching, or giving the Bible study, right? I had six brothers with me up on the bleachers, and this was back in 1988 in Folsom State Prison. And, uh, you know, the, the people were running the prison who ran the prison. And here comes one of the, the what we call the shot callers walking by in, a, in all his glory and pride with his, with his two bodyguards, right? And he was a big old dude, like 6'2", six, 6'3", six, right? And he's, he's running all hard against me. I've been walking all hard, and, and he sees me, and he's like, and he runs over there to me, and he goes, what are you doing? And I'm like, this is my Bible. I go, I'm giving a Bible study. I said, don't you know we run this? You don't be doing that. You're putting us down. You're putting our rasa down, right, 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 all this kind of stuff, and threatening me. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. He goes, you're disrespecting me. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're talking about respect. I go, you just walked up in the middle of my teaching here and started running off at the mouth. I go, if you want me to talk, you want to talk to me, you want to talk about respect, have a seat. When I'm done, we'll talk. He went and sat down, crossed his leg, put on, you know, put on that cara de hacha, we say, right? And uh, I sat there, I went through my study, you know, I told the brother, well, when I, matter of fact, when I, turn, when I stopped talking with him, and I turned around, I looked, out of the six brothers, there was only three left. Three had <laughs> took off, right? That's how it was. They, you know, they were scared. They were in fear. And I was like, what happened to the brother? Corrieron, brother. They ran. <laughs> okay, all right, you know. So I finished up the study, and then I talked to the man. And, of course, he went, told me his thing, what, what he would do to me and have done to me if I continued. I said, well, guess what? We, we used to have what we called the main yard every, every other day. So that was like on a Monday. So that following Wednesday, I was going to be on the main yard. So I go, well, I go, guess what? I'll be out here Wednesday, and I'm going to be doing this. If you feel you got to take me out, then that means I'm going to go home and be with Jesus a lot sooner than I thought. I go, so I'll be out here. Bring your fierro, and I'll be here. All right? And there I was. Comes Wednesday, and there I am again. Stand there, and here he comes again. <laughs> I said, this time he didn't come and just interrupt. He just came and sat down and waited, right? So I went ahead and finished, you know, I finished my study. And, of course, he comes up, and, you know, of course, he's looking down at me like this. <laughs> Even though I used to think I was 6'4", I wasn't, you know. But <laughs> So he's, he's looking down at me, and he's, you know, barking at me and whatnot. And uh, I said, look, I told you I was going to continue to do this. This is what God called me to do. This is what I'm going to do. Well, why weren't you doing it on the street? I go, that's why I'm here, because I didn't do it. I go, that's why I'm here. I go, he didn't understand that I was there because I was a disobedient child of God. He didn't understand because I was a backslider. I didn't want to be obedient to the calling that God had given me. I ended up in my mess. Amen? And ended up where I ended up. 
Of course, he left me. To the glory of God, that guy ended up becoming one of my best advocates because he became my evangelist. Even though he was a shot caller, before you knew it, he was bringing guys to me. He goes, hey, brother, here's a guy who just arrived here. And he brings him, he goes, talk to him about Jesus. And of course, I would tell these guys, hey, man, the Lord is opening the door for you to serve him. I go, these dudes will respect you, but you got to stand in what you're going to believe. If you want to serve the Lord, so how much time you got? Oh, I got 15. Young kids, 19, 20-year-old kids, right? And I'd be like, right now's your opportunity. Just stand. Come on with it. And they're like, no, oh, I want to be a homie. Man, are you serious? You know what this dude is going to do with you? <laughs> like I tell people, the devil uses us like bubble gum, chews us, gets all the juice out of it, and spits us out. Huh? You know what you do with gum, right? Chew it up, and, and that's what he does. So it's all about standing, amen? amen. Not being ashamed, amen? In uh, Romans, one of my favorite verses again. Let's go over there. I got a lot of favorite verses. Amen. Romans 1, 1, 16. And this is Paul talking to the Roman church, amen? Remember the Roman church, where there were Gentiles. Amen. He says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek or the Gentile, to you and I. Amen. So it's not being ashamed, not to be ashamed. Amen. It didn't matter where I went, what prison I went to. All, I don't know, I think it was five or six different prisons, maybe more, I don't know. But they always transfer you. It's about money. So they move you from one place to another make, make money off of you. They herd you like cattle, <laughs> so to speak. That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> And, but you have to be able to go wherever you're going and stand and know who you are in Christ. You have to understand, I'm a child of God. It doesn't matter. And wherever I went, God always had people there already that knew me, even if it wasn't Christians. There were people there at the prisons that knew me from other prisons, and they would go tell the Christian brothers, hey, you got a new brother just drove up. He's a pastor. He plays music. He sings, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? And the brothers would come search me out. Or they would take me to the brothers. Oh, here's the brothers over here. Because they knew me. And they weren't serving God. You know, they weren't serving God. But they would take me, man. And as years went on, I would, I would, you know, have brothers that would write other brothers from other prisons. And guys would send me their greetings. Hey, do you remember this brother? His name was Michael, man. He was over here with you at Corcoran or whatever. And I'd be like, hmm, Michael. Well, he wasn't serving God at the time. But he said that because of your walk, he gave his life to the Lord. Amen. He would say, this little dude stands... No matter what comes at him, he stands and continues to preach the word, continues to walk. No matter what the homies tell him, he continues to go forward in what he believes. Amen. And he said, what am I doing? And they give their life to the Lord. Amen. But it takes us standing. It takes us standing. Am I perfect? We're far from it. Amen. Do I have my flaws? Yeah, I have my flaws. You can ask my wife whenever you see her. Amen. <laughs> She'll tell you about them. Amen. So wherever I went, I had to understand, amen, who I was in Christ. I had to understand. I came to understand. Let's go to John chapter 1. I'm just off the, off the mark now on my, on my message. <laughs> John chapter 1. And these are scriptures, as I've shared on other occasions, that the Lord gave me, not because somebody preached them to me, but somebody said, hey, brother, here's a scripture the Lord gave me for you. No, I'm talking about... While you're praying, you're fasting, you're seeking God, and the Holy Spirit tells you, go read this. Understand who you are. Amen? Right there in John chapter 1, verse 12, it says, But as many as received him, to them he gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them who believe on his name, which were, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And my last name, you guys know our last name is Baruch, even though it's Hebrew, not because I had a Hebrew name or my descendants were Jewish, was I, did I come into this? It was because God decided, I'm going to choose that little dude. Amen. He's going to be mine. Amen. A lot of times we ask, what, why you choose me? You know, I'm, as you guys know, I'm a little guy, right? So, you know, we all played sports. All my brothers, even though they're not that big, but they're all bigger than me. I was kind of like the runt of the family, right? So whenever we had sports in, in, in school, wherever, guess who was the last one chosen? It was always me. 
you know. I was always, and I would like, I already knew it, you know, playing basketball, I'd just be with the ball. <laughs> I know I'm going to be the last one, okay. But after they choose me and then I'd play because I had to hustle double, then the next time it was like, okay, I got good, I got one, <laughs> right? I'm going to pull him. The little dude moves, he hustles, right? And that's the way it was because I knew it had to be. But it was already God showing me that it didn't matter how other people looked at me, he had chosen me. He had chosen me. It didn't matter. I mean, the guys that came at me, the devils that rose up against me, believe me, they were big dudes. But I had to stand in boldness, Amen. understanding who I was in Christ. Amen. And be able to talk. I could, have, I could have talked in my pride. I mean, I know how to defend myself. I've been through a lot of fighting and stuff like that. And, I, I, of course, in your mind, it comes up. This dude's here calling you names and calling you this and that. And I, always, I already knew always when guys come at you, you got to stand a certain way to be ready to, you know, whatever you got to do. To protect yourself, right? So I would always take a little stance, you know. They come near me. My brother Abel used to know martial arts. He taught me a few little things as a little guide to defend yourself when big guys come against you, right? And I knew all that. So I would always stand, but then when the, once they would start talking, I'd go, this guy's talking out of fear. That's what he's talking out of. So then I would stand in boldness, not in my pride, in my boldness. I could stand up and say, no, 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 no. It ain't like that. We're not going to do this that way. I'm not going to bow, just like we've seen, we read over there in Daniel. I was not going to bow to that image of being that gangster, even though at one time I did think I was that person. Amen. I was not going to go back to who I was in, in, in the past. Amen. Because I had become a new creation. I had become a new child. I had become a child of God. Amen. And I understood that. And when we stand, we have to stand in full assurance that God is with us. Amen. God is with me. No matter where I went. I look back at all the times when I used to even go into the enemy's camp. At one time, I got my life thread, and I didn't even know it. These guys wanted to do harm me. And you know what I mean by harm me. And I didn't know it. And I was eating child with my, uh, an ex-cellmate of mine. And he was the type that he would eat real fast, and then he'd take off. And that particular day, he came and sat with me. He wasn't my cellmate anymore. And he ate slow, and he just sat back, and we're talking. I'm like, okay, what are you doing? You know, usually eating, you're running. What, what's going on? He goes, oh, you don't know why I'm here? He goes, I think I'm the angel the Lord has put here to protect you. I go, angel to protect me? I go, what are you talking about? He goes, you don't know? They want to book you. you know, they want to hurt you, right? And I was like, who wants to hurt me? Oh, man, these guys, the word's out on the yard. They want to get you, man, because of this and that and that. I said, are you serious? I go, that's why you're here? I go, brother, do you think when I tell you that I stand on the word of the Lord that I'm lying to you or something? I go, when I tell you that the angel of the Lord encamps around about me to protect me and defend me, you think I'm lying to you? I said, brother, get up and go. I don't need you. I got the angels of God encamped around about me. They're protecting me, you know what I mean? And he would leave. Well, he didn't tell me who it was exactly, right, was planning to do harm to me. So before you know it, after one service one day, here's all these dudes hanging out, and there I go with the brothers, you know. Hey, what's up? Hey, como estas? How you doing, brother? And they're like, Hey, hey, Brother Baruch. <laughs> and I'm shaking their hands, and these are the guys that want to do hurt to me. But I didn't know it. Amen? And then after that, one of their own jumped up and said, you know what, if you guys are talking about you want to hurt this dude, you're going to have to come to me first. Because you know what, you ain't going to mess with the brother. Amen? You're not going to mess with them, no matter what had happened. Amen? And after I found out, you know, who it was, I was like, what? And I'm over there walking into the camp, into the enemy's camp, right? What was I doing, Right? But it's just knowing that God is with you. Yeah. No matter, even today, wherever we go, God is with us. Amen. Yeah. At my job right now, we are so busy. We need more people, really, but they don't, you know. Anyway, it's about money. But anyways, we're so busy. And, you know, I'll come home and complain, you know, to the wife and say, man, we had this, I had this, this, all these people. I've been working from 10 to 12 hour days every day. And I get up at 5 in the morning. I go in at 630. I come home 530, 630, 7. I'm not that young anymore. I'm starting to feel it a little bit more, amen? But the point is this. What my wife will tell me is, Juan, haven't we prayed for that? Then we pray for more customers to come in? Then we pray for more business? Oh, yeah, maybe we ought to tell them, okay, now hold it back. <laughs> hold back that blessing, amen? But the point is this. You stand no matter what, amen? In adversity and sickness, what, is, what, are the, what are the marriage vows? Who knows their marriage vows? You still remember <laughs> Where's Pastor Angel? Bring us your paper, huh? <laughs> How long does he take to marry you? <laughs> like two hours. <laughs> what 
bows. <laughs> what was he talking about? So it doesn't matter what we go through. It doesn't matter what happens in our life. We're going to stand in faith. And if God says it's time for you to come home, come on with it, Jesus. We're going home. Amen? We're going home. That's it. We're going to receive our healing one way or another. Either here physically or spiritually, we jump out of this body and, oh, my God. <laughs> you were all excited about that, dude? Come on, man. <laughs> you weren't all that. Amen? You're going to stop back and look at yourself and say, oh, Lord Jesus, help me. <laughs> Thank you for your grace. Amen. You guys see me now with my, my partial broke? Huh? I was like, I, I, I even felt like calling pastor. He said, I can't make it, pastor. Why not? My partial broke. <laughs> what? <laughs> Put a fake gum in there or something. You know? <laughs> That's why you, you hear that little whisk, whisk, whisk. Is that what Can you hear it? <laughs> so we have to stand on this word, amen? Let's go to, to uh, Romans chapter 10. And for us to grow in our confidence, in our, in our trust, in our faith in the Lord, we have to have that word in us. Because it's the word, the Holy Spirit through the word that's going to keep us. Amen. Romans 10, 10, 17. It says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. I remember when I first ever gave my life to the Lord, I used to go to a fivefold ministry. Pastor's gone home to be with the Jesus now. And he would always quote these kind of scriptures. He, he was a, a faith preacher, right? The word of faith. And he would always quote this, and, I, and I, I just never would get it. In all honesty, I say, why is he always saying that, right? So faith comes by hearing. By hearing what? Hearing the word of God. Amen? When you go witness to somebody, you go witness to them about what God has done in your life. How God has changed you. Share scriptures with them. Look at man. This scripture says here, just like we share right now in John chapter 1. Amen? This is where I came to understand that I am a child of God. Take that scripture and say, man, I'm a child of God. Right. Not because I'm a Jew. Not because my grandma was a, a, a Christian. I mean, she prayed for me. Amen. Praise God. I mean, somebody prayed for me. Yeah. Had me on their mind. Took the time and prayed for me. Amen? Amen. And that's what we're doing, praying for other people as well. Our yeah. loved ones. Amen. Praying for anybody that's around you. While I drive to work, all I'm doing is praying and talking to the Lord. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Psalms 91 person staying in the face of the Lord. Praying. Do I mess up? Yeah, I mess up. Do I have errors? Yeah, I have errors. Father, forgive me, man. There I went again. I like to tell jokes, and sometimes the jokes aren't the right ones, right? They'll come out just because I know a lot of jokes. Amen? And people look at me, <laughs> hey, brother. <laughs> Ooh, that, was, that one shouldn't have came out that way. Okay, I'm sorry. We're going to change it. Amen. So we change them around. But the thing is that we have to understand that our faith came by hearing the word of God. Yes. Amen. Our hearing was a spiritual hearing, not an audible physical hearing. It was a spiritual hearing because I'm sure somebody had talked to you about Jesus many years before you came to know Jesus. Right. Right. Those locals, these holy rollers, man, he done went hallelujah on me. I don't know what happened to the homie. Huh? First time I went to try to preach to my homeboys, I almost got killed. And I wanted to go preach to the homeboys, but my pastor kept telling me, don't go back to your neighborhood. Don't go back to your... tarugo, Stubborn. What does pastor say? We're hard-headed. Tercos. Necios. And there I go. And I'm out there. My homeboys are all smoking uh, PCP and drinking, and they're all high, and they're all like robots out there. And I'm trying to talk to them about Jesus. And then here come the rivals, and boom, 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 boom. And I'm, whoa, whoa. You know, what the heck? What am I doing out here? And by the grace of God that I didn't get hit because I just heard <laughs> flying by me that when it was over, I stopped and went, oh, am I all here? I didn't get hit. And then one of the homeboys got hit down the ways. Huh? And I learned, you know what? You better stay away from here. The devil wants to take you out. And he doesn't stop. He doesn't stop. Amen? But we have to stand in Jesus. Every day you got to plead the blood over your mind, your spirit, soul, and body. Cover yourself and let the holy angels encamp round about you. Stand on that word. Lord, your word says this. 
I'm believing you. He's the one who promised never to leave us or forsake us. Lord, you promised that. That's your word. That's what you said. I'm standing on your word. You said that you were never going to leave me or forsake me. Why am I feeling, feeling, what does Pastor say? Feeling. (laughs) Why am I feeling that you're not here? Because discouragement comes. Huh? Our faith starts to kind of like falter. Things have not fallen into place the way that we expected them to fall into, uh, into place. Amen? But we got to stand. We got to believe it. Lord, you said it. Your word says it. I'm standing on your word. Amen? You gave me this faith to believe. I'm believing now. Amen? You said my whole family, my whole household was going to be saved. My whole household is going to be saved. Amen? My, my youngest son... I'm announcing to you guys. My youngest son, his, his uh, oh, wife to be because they're going to get married finally after 12 years. How long have they been together? <laughs> after 12 years? Well, they had told the girl that she couldn't have babies. Huh? And guess what? She's pregnant. He, he called me up crying. He called me up crying, Dad, Dad. And I'm like, what, what's wrong? He goes, he goes, oh, I just want to tell you. He goes, I haven't told nobody. I'm not letting nobody know yet. He goes, but... Uh, I just want you to know, you know, uh, Alicia's pregnant. I said, praise God. I go, amen. I, go, I, I, I was praying that the Lord was going to give you a baby boy. Well, but dad, uh, she's not supposed to get pregnant. I go, well, it was you, right? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I didn't say that. I just said, I said, <laughs> I, just, I didn't say that. But I, I said, okay. I said, there's a guy back there that keeps putting up a sign. What's the sign say? I can't see that far. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But Fred, he, he, Fred's hungry. <laughs> I'm trying to go fast. I'm trying to go fast. No, no. <laughs> the main point is this. I believed in faith when he told me that well, he, didn't, he gave me a different story as to why they couldn't get, have babies or get pregnant. But he didn't say it was her issue. He said it was his issue. And I was like, I've never known any sterile baruchas. <laughs> My first wife, I used to just look at her and she was pregnant. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, <laughs> magic, amen. But I was praising God, amen? amen? And I go, why are you? He goes, well, you know, because you know, of this and that. I said, I go, Johnny, we've been praying for this boy. I go, I've been praying that the Lord would bless you with the child. I go, so you know what, just thank the Lord. I go, come on, Mio, what's going on here? You know what I mean? Yeah, Dad, so then after, he goes, okay, I already announced it to my siblings, you know, and send me sonograms and all that good stuff. Sonogram? Sonogram? Yeah. Of the baby, right? And I, I keep telling him it's a boy. He goes, well, we don't know. I go, it's a boy. Don't be telling me what it is. I already know. You know? <laughs> That's what I've been praying for. <laughs> I, was, I was praying for. It's, as men, you know, we want child to carry on our name. Amen? amen. So we, we, we say amen, amen. We didn't go where we were supposed to go, but amen. I pray you receive something and that you learn to stand. Amen? To stand no matter what comes, no matter what adversity, no matter what the devil throws at you, stand. I am a child of God. Lord, I tell my kids this. I go, when you find yourself in a mess and you feel that the mud, the the, the quicksand has got you all the way up to your throat and you're like this, I could look up and say, Father, help me. Cry out to Jesus and he's going to be there. Amen. He's going to pull you out of that muck and mire. Just like he did all of us, right? He pulled, that's where he pulled us from. Don't tell me you was all holy. Huh? Don't tell me you said, okay, Jesus, here I am. <laughs> huh? Even though we thought, it, we thought like that one time, at one time, huh? I raised my hand. I was the one that came to Jesus. Man, Jesus brought you. You wouldn't have, you wouldn't have came otherwise, amen? So we're going to be doing communion. I pray you guys receive something from that and you learn how to stand. Uh, like I said, through, throughout all the time that, that I was away, when I first heard this song, that was the first thing that it brought to my heart. Oh, I thought it was candy. Oh. <laughs> I was like, what the? <laughs> you giving me candy? <laughs> uh, that song really, really touched my heart because, uh, you know, like I said, you, you look at the, the walls 
around you, uh, all the things that go on behind those walls, which you guys don't, don't hear about at all. And of course, when we come out, we don't want to tell stories about all that kind of madness. We do share a little bit sometimes, but not everything. But the main thing is this, that no matter what we went through, the Lord remained faithful. Amen. The Lord remained faithful. Amen. He always blessed me. He watched over me. He kept me. Right before I got out, uh, we had a northern southern riot. There's a war going on in the system. And uh, this brother came and he told me, he goes, he goes, he goes, hey, be careful. Because like I lived in one this dorm and then northerners lived in the next dorm. He goes, be careful. And I go, why? He goes, I had a dream about you last night. I go, what was it about? He goes, I seen your dorm was all full of blood, all the beds, all the walls, everything that was blood just running out of the dorm. I go, wow, that's the blood of Jesus. Because I, I plead the blood over myself and over my, 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 my neighbors and over the building, over all of us. And I told my sister Maria, she goes, that's the blood we've been pleading over you on <laughs> when I shared that testimony. And you got to plead that. I'm covered by the blood. Amen. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. Amen. Amen. So let's go to 1 Corinthians. Let's okay. I even got music behind me, huh? Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And you guys have your portable communion. It's pretty cool, huh? Don't do like we used to do. We used to get, they used to give us welches. The little, the little, uh, I don't want to get my shirt all purple. <laughs> what do you call that stuff? The welches, uh, grape, grape juice? And so we had, we had, you know, we used to have our yard ministry, the, the, the Hispanic and the, the English ministry would get together on this particular yard. So it would be like 40 of us guys that we'd have communion. So we had one guy designated to hold the communion stuff, the, the wafers and the, and the juices. So what he did, he opened up all the cans and poured it into a sriracha bottle. You know sriracha bottles? He cleaned it out and then he poured the, 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 the welches in there. And then by the time he brought it to give communion, of course, it already fermented. <laughs> so when you get it, you go, ooh. <laughs> oh, Jesus made this into wine. Huh? <laughs> hey, man, it's right there in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 11. Oh, wow. That was a liar. And we're going to start reading that verse. Well, let's read over here first. And this is verse 26 says, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat, and eat of that bread and drink of that cup. So let's examine our hearts. Amen. And whatever it is that may have been holding you back or hindering you from giving completely to the Lord. Because sometimes we say, oh, yeah, I'm 100% and we're only 50. You know what I mean? So just that, Lord. Help me to be able to persevere. Help me to be able to stand when adversity comes, when anything comes. Help me to stand in faith and continue to believe in you. Amen. Go ahead and take a minute or so. Hallelujah, Father. Amen. That was a quick minute. Amen. So it says in verse 23, it says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Take of the bread and do it in remembrance. In the name of Jesus, amen. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup 
is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. You may drink of your cup. Amen. We're going to pray. Or, amen. Brother Fred's going to close in prayer. I pray you receive something. And remember, stand. Hallelujah. What a great word he just gave us right now. What a blessing. What a blessing. To stand in the boldness of God and his word and his truth. Well, it was just awesome. Thank you, Pastor, for that word. So let's all come in agreement. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for this time, Lord God, that Pastor one imparted into our hearts father the truth father to stand in boldness father we thank you lord god we are so grateful that we got that word today father and i know that you're still in the business of healing of miracles father because you're a faithful god and we thank you father oh how thankful we are lord god we just ask you lord god before we walk out this building father that you bless the food that we're about to partake in, Father. That uh, we just have an awesome fellowship, Father, one and with one another, Lord God. And in the ones that don't stay, Father, that wherever they go, that travel mercies are with them, Father. So we just thank you again, Lord God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Facebook. Thank you, YouTube. We appreciate you. And we'll see you again. First time visitors, please uh, make your way to the front of the line, please. Thank you.